Mean comments! Not super interested in YouTubers' lives. No offense. Hi guys, welcome back. <laughs> if you're new here, hi! My name is Sarah and what I do here is not what we're gonna do today. We're gonna have fun today. So it's been a solid two years since I have read mean comments and that's, that's my favorite. It's my favorite. I cannot tell you how entertained I am by mean comments. I just eat it up. <laughs> a lot of people, they don't love it. You know, it's not super pleasant to read criticism when you're working really hard for something that's free and avoidable if you don't like it. I have been collecting mean comments. Uh, my best friend Kelly has helped me also to collect these mean comments. I tried to kind of categorize them. There's a, there's a few recurring themes that definitely come up a lot and they'll probably never go away and that's okay. But we're gonna get into it today, so let's do it. Is it weird that I'm so entertained by this? Is it? I don't think it is. Anyway, so let's just get started. The first category, <laughs> I love this, from Alex Pamu. Another Bailey copycat. Cute. Sayward Davis. No offense, but Bailey Sarian is way better. <laughs> Gotta love when people bite Bailey Sarian's style and don't even credit her. Okay, so this is a recurring theme. Uh, first of all, I do credit Bailey Sarian. Look in the description box. I credit all the people that do this thing of telling true crime stories and putting on makeup or just telling true crime stories in general. There's a lot of us. You're copying Bailey and not as good. <coughs> ah, boo. Bailey had been doing it for years. Yeah, thank you, Savannah. I know. <laughs> uh, I totally get this copycat vibe from you, but with a condescending tone. You seem nice, Jen. I've been saving this one for a long time. When you order murder mystery makeup Mondays off Wish. Well, you misspelled off, first of all. And two, uh, this is one of my favorite responses. Uh, your comment was from Wish. <laughs> You're not Bailey Sarian. Correct. We all know that Queen Bailey is maybe the godmother, the pioneer of this thing. I, I've said this a million times before and other channels have said it too. She definitely inspired us. We all have taken inspiration from a lot of different things. She's the one who caught fire first and good for her. I wish her all the success in the world and I wish everyone here all the success in the world too. There's room for everybody. Okay, recurring theme number two. This one really cracks me up. Enough with the makeup, barf emoji. From Maggie Jean, I've seen someone else do this shtick. Makeup and gruesome stories, effing weird. You know what else is effing weird is commenting on a video you didn't like watching, but watched anyway. Thanks for the engagement. This is really silly. I swear you people are so conceited. You like to just continuously look at yourself. Ridiculous. You seem nice. I'm trying to just stay on theme of the people with the makeup. Here we go. From Wanda Pearson 6782, girl, chill on the makeup. But why though? I like to wear makeup. Ooh, this is a good one. From Milana Horner 392 we both know you are not putting makeup on for the sake of makeup. You are reading from that script. Who are you trying to fool? Yep, sure am. <laughs> I've shown you guys this before, like my setup. I'm definitely reading from a script. The cases that I cover for Crew Time are researched and totally scripted. Sometimes there's a little bit of ad lib in there, but I gotta keep myself on track. The script is hidden like, be like behind the mirror. As I'm putting on the makeup, I'm like going back and forth between the mirror and the script. Secrets. Don't put makeup on. It's annoying. Well, Pete Payette, 6690, it's spelled annoying. Why do chicks do the makeup thing? Interesting subject, good presentation, thank you. But will I watch her put makeup and interject about her face again? Nope. I don't think that's gonna be true, Angela. Here she is again. Sorry, I'm out of my lane. I see some people like the makeup thing and like commenting on it. Nice presentation, but I gotta go. But before she did, she commented again. So to listen to you, very interesting presentation. We have to watch you act like a 13 year old in front of a mirror, putting makeup on and talking. Do you people watch you put makeup on over and over again? I mean, some people like the makeup. I like the makeup. Makeup's fun. You know, you can you can just listen to the video. Makeup is not enough. <laughs> you need Bondo! <laughs> listen, the makeup looks, they're not all winners. Oh, here we go from Pat Hayes, 1043. I could have applied full makeup five times in the amount of time this woman took to tell her story, LOL. A lot of times when I'm telling these stories, I'm doing like a very elaborate makeup on purpose. 
to kind of fill up the time. I don't normally take that long to do makeup. Oh, here we go from Dana Corbin. I'll subscribe if you stop doing your makeup in the video. It's inane and distracting. You guys always come to my defense. I appreciates you. <laughs> Brittany McCorkle said, no, I love it. I need something visual and makeup application is interesting. Agreed. You know, it's really easy to not watch my content. A lot of people don't watch my content. Just be one of those people. That's cool. I was happy to find a video about this serial killer, but when I heard in the begging of the video that you will be putting makeup on during the story, I was like, nope. That's not how you tell serial killer stories, especially when you pause to get fake lashes or comment your makeup. Please, if I want to see someone putting on makeup or putting makeup on, there's many of them out there. I want a well-told story with a serious tone. Well, you're not in the right place because I don't do that here. A lot of people don't like that and that's totally cool. I enjoy the storytelling with something else as long as it's not eating. I can't, I can't do that. Great job exploiting two people for content for your channel. Thanks for the view and engagement. Some people just really don't like this. They really don't like the storytelling or they've got really strong opinions about how it should be done. There's plenty of variety, all different kinds, or just don't engage with it at all. The tone of this is all over the place. Stupid, sassy, meme reaction, gif, Twitter shit, shortly followed by, oh, now let me lower my tone because I'm talking about dead kids. And back to uh-huh, mm-hmm, sass in reaction to the murderer's plea bargain. It's extremely jarring. Do you see what I'm saying? Like there's no way to please everybody. So like even if at certain points of the video, maybe it's not time for a joke or a, like a snarky bit of snark, even that is like people get mad about. So like, I'm listen, I'm not gonna change what I do here because I like it. You guys seem to like it. And if you don't like it, just don't watch it. No one is making anyone watch any of this at all. This is not required viewing. There's plenty of stuff on YouTube that I'm not watching. I don't watch family vlog channels. I don't watch people unboxing toys, eating channels. I don't watch AS. There's a lot of things that are very, very, very popular that other people really love and it's not for me. So I just don't watch it. All right, Beverly Johnson 8801, something so serious and 16 years ago, and you're doing your makeup and giggling over your eyebrows. I find this presentation soulless. My heart goes out to the family of the victim and the family of the murderer. I sure hope they don't have to relive this through you. This kind of brings up a question that I have gotten before. Like, am I ever concerned about the victim's families or even the perpetrator's families or even the perpetrator? It's not that I'm not concerned about them. That's a terrible thing that they've had to endure and live with and all these things, but it's not me telling the story that's already out there that is going to upset a person. It's, it's the event that's already occurred. Nothing to do with me. A recurring theme that I see a lot is comments about my hair or my hairstyle. Many people are very, very nice. Thank you, you guys are so sweet. But a lot of people don't like my hair, especially when my hair was shorter and I had the bangs. My He-Man hair is what I called it. Thank God you lost that sorry hairstyle. Now you look pretty. The new style shows off your face better. Please don't go back to that ugly hairdo. Wow, Mary, you're gonna get mad when I cut my hair short again. Maybe I'll go back to the He-Man hair just for that. Okay, so I think that sort of covers like the recurring themed ones. So the, the biggest mean comments that I get is, you're not Bailey Sarian, you're a big old copycat. <laughs> okay. Or I hate this thing that you're doing. You're so disrespectful. You're annoying. You're ugly. And also I hate your makeup. <laughs> so I was trying to explain this to my boss the other day that I have this superpower that I've kind of developed over the years, especially as a ginger child. Um, I don't give a shit what other people think of me. Not my business. I only care if I do or say something that is hurtful or harmful to another person. But if someone doesn't like my hair or my makeup or my personality, I don't care. And a lot of people just like can't believe that because they feel a different way, but criticism, I don't think I could care less. I'm doing this video because I just kind of wanted to take a break from cases just for a minute, right? And I had asked on my community page, do you guys want to see a Q&A or do you want mean comments? It, uh, overwhelming, overwhelming mean comments. So here we are. But one of those comments on the post is the best <laughs> from Sandy Miller. Mean comments, not super interested in YouTubers lives. No offense. <laughs> None taken, none taken. 
gonna make me laugh so hard. <laughs> Sandy. Oh, here's another one, little, little political spice. Wow, we're getting into it now. You can imagine the comments that I'm gonna get on this. I love your stories, but why you always make an extra mile effort to give bad light against Republicans? I'm Hispanic, female, and proud Republican. Would you consider to respect my ideology even when it is different than you heavy Democrat ways? Just don't get into politics, will do. First of all, you don't get to tell me what I'm gonna talk about or how I'm gonna talk about it. So there's that. So I'm gonna be really careful about how I say this because we there are a lot of things that we can agree to disagree on. There are, there are some issues that you can't agree to disagree on because it's like fundamentally dangerous to an entire population. I try to align myself with people who treat people like human beings, you know. Oh, here she is again, Amelia. I'm a true non-racist. For that reason, it surprises me to hear badmouth any race. To say whites are really bad is racism in reverse. Same difference. I think there's a lot of things that, as a fellow white person, are embarrassing in history. You know what I mean? And I'm o it's okay for me to point that out totally okay with everybody disagree with me stab me in the front i can take it here's here's something that i've learned is that i'm not going to change people's ideologies in my youtube comments so it's kind of dumb to even address it at all the only thing that i don't tolerate is when people get hateful and belligerent to other people in the comments you guys you get what i'm saying or you don't and that's okay too bright green nail polish takes the viewer's attention away from your face better off red becomes better off green by the way yellow sucks too <laughs> Well, I hope my nail polish is a little bit more appealing to you, Judith. Oh, this is a good one. This is on the Matthew Shepard story. So Madison A3907 commented, Knock off the stupid focus on sex. Sex is private and does not need to be celebrated. You voice your opinion. My opinion is just as important as yours. The word perversion was made for a reason. There are men and women, period. Matthew Shepard was a gay man who was murdered for being gay. It's not perverted to be gay. So you're just wrong and that's not an opinion. Bye. People get really, really upset about the way other people have sex. Do you guys notice that? Why are you so worried about it? Mind your business. How about that? This one kind of warmed my little Grinchy Raisin heart. <laughs> Love your video. Thank you. However, simply put anyway without an S is correct. Always use it without the S. Anyways with the S is considered slang and is part of non-standard colloquial or informal English. Furthermore, since anyway is an adverb, it is impossible for adverbs to be plural. I'm a grammar stickler too, so I appreciate the information. Thank you for that. But I'm not, I'm not here to make like collegiate, you know, presentations. It's just conversational. So I use some slang and that's okay. Anyways, sweetie, never good when things start out with sweetie, right? Anyway. Anyways, hope you're not implying here that religious people are always psychos. Any sane person knows that's grossly inaccurate. Sick minds come in all walks of life. Just didn't appreciate your vibe, typical religious people. This was literally a priest who murdered multiple people, so... Oh, okay, this is actually a really good one. This is from the Brandon Tina story from Elliot Herber 1132. Hey, I love your videos. Thank you. Just want to say the term is just transgender, not transgendered. We don't add the ED part to the term. It's a small thing, but it's offensive when we hear it. It's, you know, not nice. Thank you for pointing that out. So this is an example of something that's happened a couple times before where I'm covering a story where there's a detail or a fact in the case that's not something that's that I'm familiar with that, or that I encounter or relate to in my life. You know, I'm not um, indigenous, I'm not African-American, black, you know, whatever the, t whatever the term is. So when I'm doing the research, what I try to do is adopt the terminology that's used in the reporting. I think it's one of those things where that changed over time and maybe the source material that I was using was older. So um, I, I will always defer to the people that have the experience. So thank you for pointing that out. This one's, this one's long and it kind of starts off, you know, criticizing my makeup. Boring. But then they go into, this is the Susan Smith case. She's the one who put her two kids in the car and then pushed them into a lake to kill them. What a delight. She was also having sex with prison guards. What is wrong with Susan having sex with a prison guard? It there for the taking and Susan has human needs.
Now, I was very clear in this video, um, prisoners cannot consent to sexual encounters, especially with guards who are in positions of power over them. So, no, it's not there for the taking, you fucking ghoul. Gross. Come on. This is from the Snowtown video from Kylie Stoward Hjort. I'm from Australia. I won't say it was great, but hey, you tried and I'm impressed. <laughs> I think she means my terrible accent that I was trying so hard. I love the Australian accent so much. It's one of my favorites. And I had a lot of fun in that video because I made sure to like look up Australian slang and I tried to say it with like an Australian affect to my voice that was not Great, but I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Ooh, okay, all right, we're getting into hot takes. Spicy. This was on the Vanessa Guillen video recently, okay? This is a new video. Stuff like this is why I'm against young pretty women going into the military. I've been told all kinds of stories by a high school friend who was in the military. If you didn't see this video, Vanessa Guillen was a female American soldier who was murdered. She was also sexually harassed, which led to her murder. There was a lot of comments on that video with this same flavor, like women should not be in the military, don't join the military, they can't protect you. I don't disagree with any of those things, but maybe let's not preclude women from serving the country and more so let's solve the problem of them being treated very poorly. Unreasonable? Eh? Fauci did the same thing to underprivileged kids, even orphans in New York City. He studied the effects of the AIDS drug on kids. <sighs> okay, let's back it up. So in that video, I talk about uh, Willowbrook State School and there was a lot of really, really terrible treatment happening to children. And in fact, in the 40s, they were purposefully infecting children with hepatitis so that they could study it. I looked it up. So in, in 2009, the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, which was run by Dr. Anthony Fauci, did fund clinical trials in HIV positive children that were in and out of foster care. The deaths were not attributed to the medical trials and none of the children were intentionally infected with HIV for the purpose of medical study, like they were in Willowbrook. So different situation. Not the same. Not the same. This is less a mean comment and more of like a hot take, so get ready. Is it just me or is the entire idea of giving death row inmates last meals completely idiotic? One, you're wasting food. Two, if they insist on eating close to their execution, they can eat the same prison crap they've been eating for years or decades. Three, they do not deserve to have a last meal of whatever they want. Fourth, many people in this country, people who also pay taxes, can hardly afford to eat, let alone that well. It's just absurd. Marnie, hot take. She makes some good points, I have to say. I think the last meal thing is like a relic from like old timey times where probably people were in prison not as long as they are these days. You know, it's like a last little bit of human humanization or like, I, I don't know what the justification is, but you, you make some good points, Marnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, here's another one from the Murdoch video. There was a lot of not nice things said on that video, which, okay. Nothing surprising here. I can tell you've been fortunate to never be on pills because all of that part is dead wrong. Alec Murdoch was severely addicted to opioids and all kinds of like high doses of pills, according to him and his testimony in the trial. And I made a comment in the video that that amount of drugs, um, he would have been deceased. I knew when I said that, that the nurses were gonna come for me, like the addiction nurses and people in, with experience with drug treatment and, and things like that. The reason that I said it like that was because that's how it was presented in the trial. The state was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so one of the things that continues to amaze me is how connected we all really are and how small the world really is. And what I mean by that is oftentimes you guys will leave comments saying that you know the victims, you know the perpetrator, you're connected to these people somehow, school, neighbor, friend, something like that. On every video, on every video, there's somebody who's connected, which is wild to me because I'm a really small channel. We got a pretty small audience, relatively speaking. And this comment, this one blew my hair back, y'all. Get ready for, hold on to your butts. 
I can't confirm whether or not this user with this random username is this actual person. This is on the Tony Carleo biker bandit video. I don't remember using Corneta as my location, but in hindsight that was a good one. Nice video, a few inaccuracies, but mostly accurate. And for the record, I'm not a stupid person, I had a 4.0 GPA and was well on my way to med school. Life is good now, I'm in the roofing and solar industry and doing very, very well. Also just had a beautiful baby girl a week ago. Was that Tony Carleo who commented? The subject of the video? I looked him up, found him on Facebook. He is indeed in the solar and roofing industry. And he looks like he's doing really well. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, good for you, Tony, for like turning it around, you know? And congratulations on the new addition to your family. YouTube's crazy. YouTube is crazy. <laughs> Okay, I think that is, I think that's enough for now. Enough mean comments. Remember you guys, when you're engaging with people's content on YouTube or Instagram or TikTok or any of the places and you leave comments, you're leaving them for that person to read. People get real brave behind the keyboard and I get that, whatever. Just don't, <laughs> just don't. I don't let these kinds of things get to me for reasons I already explained, my superpower of not giving a flying shit. And two, because, you know, I just I just don't allow it. You know, I just don't give it the, the energy, the mental space. I like to just keep things fun and light. And I like to do things like this with you to share how I deal with it because I know that people online struggle with this. A lot of people have been straight up chased offline by comments like this. Or people are like too afraid to start a YouTube channel or a, some other social media content creation because they're afraid of comments like this. Don't be afraid of comments like this. They're nothing. They're nothing burgers. For now, this was actually a really fun one. It was a nice little break from Crew Trime, but we're gonna get back to it very, very soon. We've got some good stuff coming. It's also warming up around here in the city and I wanna try to do some more things and I'll sneak in a couple of vlogs here and there just to like, share the spring and summer with you guys. Even though some people, what is it? Not interested in YouTubers lives. <laughs> okay, um, if you have a crew crime story that you wanna recommend to me, don't forget to check down in the description box. Also down there, I always get asked whenever I wear this lip color in particular, what it is, look down there. I'll link it for you. Thank you so much for hanging out today and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you wanna see more videos like this one, then consider subscribing to this channel before you leave today. I upload new videos here on YouTube every week and you can follow me on most of the other socials as well. That is it for now. I will catch you next time in the next video. Bye.